as uh, you might have heard Dr. Barbara Schmidt's lecture in uh, different forums as well that caffeine is not a direct neuroprotective. It's neuroprotective because of effect on the lung. And in Dr. Avneet's case, obviously the child was four weeks old. So if suddenly you have apnea, for example, causing the desaturation, you should think of infection or a worsening lung condition. When the FRC drops, the baby is still premature. So their brain, as we discussed, hypoxemia causing apnea. Instead of hypoxemia causing increased breathing, that's a normal response in a premature baby, which is paradoxical to what adults have or older kids have. So if that happens, you should think at why the baby is doing it. Is the lung closing down? Is there infection? Is a PDA opening back? It can be anything. It can be anemia even, which could be contributing. Okay. You, did you try a higher dose of caffeine in that baby? It's uh, um, 10 10 is the uh, highest you would go usually, but you can give an additional top-up loading dose of another 10 per kilo. Like 12 hours after the dose, you can give another 10 per kilo, but not on a regular basis. And usually we don't go more than 10 per kilo because uh, it's not absolutely safe. I have uh, Professor Bankalari's lecture on me. I think I shared it in the group. Yes, sir. So caffeine is uh, also to be taken with caution. <laughs> So like any medication, you can't assume that it's absolutely safe and the evidence to show a higher dose helps is very limited. Okay. No. Not in term ventilated. <laughs> See, not in term gestations. In fact, uh, I don't know what your practice, but beyond 34 weeks, no, we don't give. We don't. Hmm? But having said that, I have one publication on term baby with caffeine. If you check on that child, uh, actually, we don't know. We were really gone to the wall in that situation and we gave caffeine and the child removed. It's not that it is a panacea for care. We just tried it and we reported it in even pediatrics about five years ago. One dose at extubation, possibly you can consider if a baby has shallow baby. But don't think, of caffeine. don't think of caffeine for term babies at all. Hmm? No, no. So no. like difficult to extubate sometimes uh, multiple intubation extubation attempts are there no subglottic edema you may give a peri-extubation steroid dose or uh, epinephrine after extubation uh, nebulized but uh, caffeine in those settings again it's nothing is and the same with the diuretics for i mean i'm quite against diuretics so many of you routinely use diuretics for ttn for example or a baby with bpd Diuretics are not safe drugs. I mean, it's it's a, one of the drugs which has so much impact on different organ systems. And remember that the electrolytes, if you start physiology as we were discussing, every cell membrane has impact of electrolyte changes. So you lose electrolytes, you don't know how your body, each cell is going to react. I mean, we have a baby who suddenly arrest, we don't know what's happening. I mean, they are on diuretics and it might be related to electrolyte imbalance. So don't take diuretics lightly, use it as briefly as possible, don't routinely put them as we give toffees and uh, it doesn't work. And uh, nebulized butosinate that we discussed is not totally evidence-based, but there is logical uh, reasoning for it. And there is a study from Basler et al., which shows that BPD is less. In Basler study, they used, I don't know many of you, it's called the neurosis study. Uh, it was done in Germany, Austria and places. And they gave nebulized butosinate from birth till 32 weeks or till they were off oxygen. But that's overdose. Okay, you are giving unnecessarily for so many more babies. But if you select the babies who are progressing, just like Lex Doyle's uh, analogy to BPD. Now you have the BPD calculator where the risk of BPD is high. Giving oral steroids at the right age between 7 and 14 days is useful or parental steroids. Similarly, nebulized steroid has a role in babies like what Dr. Avneet described. If babies uh, 31, 32 weeks is still showing signs of not improving, you can consider, or if a baby has uh, aspiration pneumonia, meconium aspiration, not improving. These are babies who should be going home within a few days, but if they are still stuck, because the lung inflammation is a background and you're giving a nebulized medication, it might help. So these are, in my practice, I feel it helps, but again, evidence base is very difficult in such situations where you have to pick cases. Remember that most of the research is based on and allotting cases, you have to uh, pick out criteria and say I will allot, but I cannot say I will use the BPD criteria because if you have 100 premature babies and 10 of them will meet the BPD criteria, that won't power the study enough. So you cannot recruit enough babies if you are individualizing and research doesn't allow a very individualized approach to picking a patient because you need to put a criteria in the beginning. You cannot say, okay, this criteria, this baby will meet and I will select this. You cannot uh, bring in so many. That's one of the disadvantages of research and evidence-based. 
and that's why we have so many negative cochrane reviews as well we discussed systematic reviews though it helps treatment it doesn't always guide you the right way you have to use your common sense and use the approach that you will not overdo treatment so you shouldn't overdo treatment don't use treatments which you don't understand what it will do like diuretics it can be potentially harmful caffeine at the dose we are using doesn't harm but that doesn't mean a higher dose won't harm because even seizures i think there are reports of seizures being more indomethacin uh, ibuprofen pda treatment is very controversial still there are groups which show in the extreme premature babies in the bigger babies you don't need to treat we all agree now that 28 weeks and above you can ignore the pda just manage the fluid sensibly don't give too much fluid but in the extreme premature baby there still seems to be a role because these are babies where later you will think of ligation after the lung is damaged and that doesn't change anything here and uh, ligation post ligation syndromes come up so treating it at a timely fashion before the lung becomes uh, bpd related pph in situation you treat the bpd with nebulized steroid treat the pda early on when it is more likely to respond use a drug like paracetamol which is less side effects yeah.